also do some punting. And he falls down on a slick surface. The kick travels 10 yards. And it is Iowa recovering. Big lift this would be after losing the opening kickoff, a mistake by Iowa that turned out to be in their favor with the recovery of the Aaron kick. Rick Frank, who kicked a last-second field goal last week to win the game 2017 over Vandy, with a 26-yard attempt and an angle. Ball will be spotted at the 16-yard line, and the left-footed kicker's kick is no good. He missed it. So a good drive, but all for naught, as it turns out, as Frank misses a chip shot with 8.56 to go in the period. Hayden Fry, in his seventh season at the University of Iowa, longtime coach at SMU and then North Texas State. He's 56 years old, and he's had a great deal of success at Iowa City, and his team, regarded by many as the team to beat on the way to the Rose Bowl this year. And he has a unique distinction. He has been coach of the year in three different conferences, Southwest, Missouri Valley, and Big Ten. again. Ooh, this time very, very close, but <laughs> with the referee getting down on his knees, they stopped him. Iowa football. And how about Northwestern? <laughs> Leading again by a score of 21 to 10. Here's Long back to throw on third and three. The play action, receiver wide open, and a first down at the 11-yard line as number 87 Helverson is run out of bounds there. Iowa leading 10 to nothing, trying to make it 17. Harmon sweeping to the outside, turning the corner and in there for the score. So the Hawkeyes on top with 8.55 to go in the half. It is now 21 to nothing. Tennessee over number one ranked Auburn. 8.18 to go in the second quarter. Back to Al Michaels. Down and one, the ball popped. Loose. The fumble is recovered, I believe, by the Hawkeyes. They'll have to unpile, and the signal that Iowa has recovered, which is the last thing that Iowa State needed at this particular moment. Doug Burrell made the recovery. Kirk Thomas dropped the football. Kirk Thomas on a straight dive play from his fullback position is going over his right guard. Larry Station, number 36, the All-American linebacker, gets a hit and strips the football, and it's Doug Burrell, the defensive end for the Hawks, who comes in and covers it, and now once again, they have very opportune field position. 17-0, 7.36 go in the half. Long hit as he throws, but completes it to the 23-yard line of first down to Scott Helverson. He's been calling his number a lot. Score. And it's 23 to nothing, Iowa. Easy 
to see why pro scouts are becoming more and more excited about this man, number 31, Ronnie Harmon. Potential All-American for uh, the Hawkeyes. Breaks the tackle there, makes a cut there, a sharp cut back. Looks back over his shoulder, and he's on in for an easy touchdown. That's touchdown number two on the day for number 31, tailback Ronnie Harmon. Time about the only way they can do it. First down on, the on second and one. Espinoza has this one picked off by Jay Norvell. And he has some blocking. He's to midfield. Norvell to the 40-yard line. Norvell starting to run out of gas. And down he goes at the 28-yard line. Dave Haight finally catches up with him. So Espinoza mounting a drive, taking them deep into Iowa territory, and then bam. This one is a 41-yard attempt. Holtman's kick is just good. Boy, is he having a charm day or what? Slips on the opening kickoff, but his team recovers. Has a deflected kick go through for an extra point, and this one goes over by an inch. 27-0 Hawkeyes. consecutive times and they lost the ball on downs earlier so long tries to capitalize and does he throws a touchdown to Mike Flagg the tight end Aiden Price third ranked Hawkeyes blowing Iowa State away and let's pay a visit to the campus of the University of Iowa <laughs> University of Iowa. Today, students and faculty are building upon this tradition in exciting new ways. They've come from every part of Iowa, from every state, and from around the world to study in the arts, the humanities, the sciences, and the professions. They're part of the Iowa tradition, part of the excitement of Iowa. And kicking off to Iowa State with a minute and 47. I think it might be a little somber in that Cyclone locker room at the half. Somber Cyclone locker room. I like that. What price alliteration. <laughs> Loose ball again. And Iowa has it at the 19-yard line. Jim Riley recovers. And Iowa State is all confused on returning kicks. And a minute and a half to go in one of the longest halves in Iowa State football history. This is one to burn the film by. 34-0 Hawkeyes. On third down and eight. Long, throwing a nice out pattern at the nine-yard line to Scott Helverson, and he has a first down. Under a minute to go in the first half. Long on first and goal. Lofting it into the end zone. Wide open is Smith and a touchdown for Robert Smith, number two. Holtman kicks it through. Team record is 70 points for Iowa. In 1957, they scored 70 against Utah State. They have 41 with 47 seconds remaining to be played in the first half. Hawkeyes rolling as Espinoza runs out of bounds, and that mercifully ends the first half. That's the good news for Iowa State. The bad news of the Cyclones is they have 30 more minutes of this. It's halftime. And the Iowa Hawkeyes lead 41 to nothing. And we're going to uh, get out of Al Troutwig. We'll get a word with him. Frank Sinatra, Barbara Streisand, but I do have Hayden Fry. <laughs> Coach, has anything gone wrong for your team in the first half? Yeah, the uh, first series of plays were just terrible. What about after that, though? You really seem to settle down. Well, you know, uh, our guys are proven. We, we needed a challenge. We got it early. That really got us fired up. Our guys are playing super football. 
Are you a little disappointed in what Iowa State has shown you so far? It seems like they are completely removed from the game now. I don't know whether they're concentrating anywhere near the way a team should to come back. No, they're not They're not removed at all. Iowa State has a lot of pride. They'll come back and fight us the second half. The big thing is to keep our guys motivated so we don't let up. We've marveled a lot of Chuck Long. How much more will we see him today? Well, uh, I, I can't tell you. It depends on how Iowa State plays early in the third quarter. If we keep moving the ball, I'll take him out probably by the middle of the third quarter. Okay, glad you didn't wear your cowboy boots today. The rain would have hurt us. Thank you, Coach. 41-0. The Hawkeyes over the Cyclones. We'll be back with all our halftime activities on CFA College Football in a moment. 41-0. Especially for J.C. transfers from California. Long. Has time. Going deep. Great catch and a touchdown. Number 87, Scott Helverson. He was covered on the play by Terrence Anthony, who looked like he was going to be able to deflect it. But Helverson got good body position, pulled it in, and Chuck Long has another touchdown pass. Straight drop back by Chuck Long. He slides forward in his protective pocket. He's going to his wide receiver, Helverson, who is covered by Anthony there. He reached, outreaches Anthony and then just trots in for a 46-yard touchdown reception. It's been an up-and-down year for Terrence Anthony so far. He was beaten badly two weeks ago, and then he turned around, and he was Big 8 Defensive Player of the Week for his efforts against the Vanderbilt. Oakland's extra point is no good. its advantage. They lead 47 nothing. The field goal unit comes onto the field, so they'll try to make it an even 50. Look at some of those remaining. Most of those will be at the drugstore seeking cold remedies on Monday. <laughs> Holtland, 27-yard attempt, ball to the 17-yard line, and Holtland's kick, he is good. Refter the punt. 3.34 to go in the third period. Apple sets up at the 45-yard line to accept the punt. Again, Refter kicking into the wind. Comes down with a high snap, and it's a terrible kick off the side of his foot. It takes a sideways roll and is dead at the 27-yard line. Mark Vlasic, he has seen a lot of action in the first two games because of the blowouts, which has enabled him to come in, as is the case again today. And Vlasic is going deep. Slight 57 to nothing edge over the Cyclones. S keeps it, and this one is finally over. As the eight or nine people who remain count down the remaining seconds at Cyclone Stadium in Ames, Iowa, where the Hawkeyes come in and just blow the Cyclones out of here. 7-3, a route for the third year in a row for the Hawkeyes, and the only mystery remaining is whether or not Iowa will be number one next week. Possible. Big win for the Hawkeyes as they beat the Cyclones by 54. We'll do that. A route today, Coach Hayden Fry, for your Iowa Hawkeyes. This really, though, is not the kind of game that you want for your team getting ready to uh, tackle the rest of the teams in your conference, is it? Well, it's kind of scary. Uh, we really thought uh, we'd have a lot better test today, and, uh, you know, uh, Iowa State really fought hard. We had on the wrong shoes to begin with. That's the reason we were slipping and sliding. I said it looked like a, a shoe store having a sale right near the first couple of plays of the game. Well, we learned which shoes to wear. <laughs> we, uh, you know, we're real proud of our youngsters. They're playing real hard, and uh, I hope Iowa State can go on and have a real good season. They, they do a lot of things well, but our guys were ready, and uh, certainly we should become better and better. Did you learn anything from a game like this? Well, yeah. Uh, uh, some of the blitzes that got to us, I, I think we're going to have to work real hard on those so other people, we don't have an opportunity to get uh, Chuck Long and Ronnie Harmon hurt.
much of this uh, result do you feel is, a, is an effort on the part of your team uh, as opposed to a letdown on the part of Iowa State? Well, I don't think it was a letdown on Iowa State part. They, they play with a lot of emotion. We, we just have a better ball club, and, and uh, you know, we had them outmanned, and, and uh, you know, what else can I say? Our guys executed and uh, put points on the board, turnovers. Uh, you know, we, we didn't do very well from a statistical standpoint from the defense. They moved the ball on us. Okay, Coach, warm up. Congratulations. You look pretty powerful today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, Al Michaels, finally, up to you. All right, Trout, great job down there, by the way. 57-3 to three is the final. Some good questions uh, from Al to, to Hayden Fry, and I'm sure Hayden has to be thinking some of the same things we are right now. Just how good is Iowa? We really don't know. They haven't met formidable opposition, obviously. I suppose we'll begin to find out next week, and things are going to get pretty interesting as far as Iowa and a possible uh, national championship are concerned. I think next week will be a good test for them when they take on the Michigan State Spartans, because Michigan Michigan State is an improved team. I think one of the things we saw today is that Hayden Fry can put together the kind of a game plan that he really wants to do. He told me yesterday that ideally he would have the perfect balance between his running and his passing game and he would continue to dominate with a strong defense. So in a way it was pretty much of a, a textbook game plan for a coach that uh, has done it with some consistency. Well we covered uh, Bosco a couple of weeks ago as you mentioned in the BYU Washington game and now you've seen Long. Uh, how would you compare the two? You know, some that's a, it's a good question, and I, I think that maybe after looking at Long today, that uh, maybe he's got a little edge over Robbie Bosco in some areas of his game, particularly in executing the play-action passes uh, and throwing the deep pass. Robbie Bosco may be a little bit better on the straight drop back and throwing the short passes, particularly to his back. So I think it's going to be neck and neck for those two quarterbacks if it gets down to a quarterback for the high. Trophy. Quickly, if you were an NFL director of player personnel and could pick between the two, which one would you go for? Just after today, Chuck Long. Look there at some of the final numbers, and uh, I don't know that it's necessarily indicative of the route. Obviously, it's in Iowa's favor in every department that means anything, and certainly in the final score, which turned out to be Iowa 57 and Iowa State 3.